Um, okay, uh, so today's session, I will uh, go into details to introduce uh, Linux generic ops. And um, so there's a whole uh, rationale and the design behind uh, why the Linux uh, ops uh, looks like this. But uh, today we'll only uh, look at it from a uh, user's uh, perspective. Uh, we just uh, will uh, talk about how to use the Linux ops. So um, almost uh, all the uh, high level operations uh, will need to lower to Linux form and then uh, further be lowered to for loops. And um, all the, and the most uh, basic uh, Linux op is uh, Linux uh, generic. There are some other named uh, Linux ops that are built based on um, uh, Linux generic, uh, but uh, Linux generic is the one that's uh, most uh, flexible that uh, give us a lot of pow power to express uh, the behavior of uh, operation. So uh, to build a, a Linux generic op, uh, you would need uh, you need um, three, uh, four components: um, the iterator types, the indexing maps, the input output tensors, and compute payload. Uh, I will go through each of them uh, one by one. So um, overall, uh, Linux generic op uh, looks like this, um, and uh, the uh, the uh, the first components we need to pass the uh, op builder is uh, iterator types. So uh, the number of uh, iterator types uh, defines the uh, how many layers of nested loop uh, do we have, and also um, for each loop if the iterations are independent in, for this loop, then we say it's a parallel uh, iterator type. Uh, but if it has a loop carry dependency and you need to accumulate something or uh, base the result on the previous iteration, then the iterator type is a reduction. So that's uh, iterator types. It's a pretty straightforward concept. And uh, in the source code in C++, you just need to um, declare a vector of string wraps with uh, specified iterator types. And uh, next uh, is uh, uh, indexing map. It's uh, it's a component that I when I first uh, started uh, find uh, quite confusing. So uh, for each of the uh, operators, uh, operands uh, of the Linux, no matter whether it's an input operands or output operands, you all need to define an indexing map for it to express how do you uh, want to index into the tensor. So, um, yeah. Um, so on the left-hand side of the index map is a group of induction variables uh, that's used to iterate through uh, each loops. And on the right-hand side are a group of uh, fine expressions. So each of the uh, fine expression corresponds to one dimension of your tensor. And the affine expression uh, uses the in, uh, induction variable to define how do you want to access the tensor along this dimension. And so if your tensor have uh, three dimension, then you need to have three uh, affine expression on the right-hand side. 
And if it's a two dimension tensor, then you need to uh, uh, you need to put two affine expression uh, for that tensor. So yeah, it's just uh, the indexing map just uh, specify how do you want to indexing into each uh, element in the tensor. Uh, we can look at some more example of affine uh, maps. So the uh, uh, the indexing map uh, for the A tensor on the uh, upper half is just uh, uh, a a uh, uh, four dimension uh, tensor accessed in a four uh, nested loop, a four D nested loop, and uh, on the lower part there's a uh, two uh, D uh, two dimensional tensor that's accessed, uh, also accessed in the uh, 4D layered loop. So with uh, those uh, indexing map plus, uh, uh, how do you use the tensors? Um, you can use them to, ex to um, implement very interesting uh, tensor operations and, and also very common tensor operations. For example, uh, if uh, with those indexing map, if we are doing an uh, add operation like this, uh, we are essentially um, accumulatively adding the lower, the inner dimension of the tensor A and store the result. Uh, accumulated some result into tensor B. And um, if too, too much size, too many size. Um, so, uh, and another example, if we arrange the input and output tensor like this, so the A tensor become the output tensor and the B become input tensor, then, um, operation, equal operation like this would actually be doing uh, uh, broadcasting the two dimension of tensor B into the uh, third and fourth dimension of tensor A. So essentially this will be a broadcasting um, operation. Um, and here's another example that uh, is for uh, uh, that's the uh, indexing map is represent for a two D nested loop. Um, the affine expression uh, switch the induction variable when it access the uh, the tensor. So. Uh, this is what we do when we want to transpose a uh, tensor. Um, hope that uh, makes sense. It's not too confusing. Do, do you have any questions about this part? It's pretty clear to me, yeah. Nice okay. explanation. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so uh, this is uh, a fine map and in the uh, here's a code snippet um, of what it looks like in the code. So uh, for the first tensor, uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, the affine uh, map, just to, the uh, affine expressions are just using the index induction variable directly. And for the second um, indexing map, it's uh, uh, we need a little bit more steps uh, to construct the affine expression and uh, the affine map. So the left-hand side uh, is just uh, uh, four induction variables. It's specified by the uh, dim, dim count. And um, to construct the affine expression, we just uh, specify uh, 
uh, code something like this and pass zero to indicate its dimension zero and uh, pass one to indicate its time one. So that's uh, just uh, how it looks. Um, and um, the next uh, components for the uh, Linux uh, direct, uh, generic op is uh, are the input and output operands. So uh, the Linux jobs can have any number of uh, input and output operands, and um, the 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 op the shape of the operands will decide the bound of the induction variable. Uh, this just uh, happened under the hook uh, for the Linux uh, ops. We don't need to worry about this, but under the hook, Linux op will guarantee uh, this so that uh, we no, don't need to worry about um, tensor accessing out of bounds and don't need to worry about those cases. And um, the output operands of the Linux jobs decide the uh, result type of the Linux operation. So uh, when you specify the return type, pass the return type to the op builder, uh, just uh, need to uh, pay attention the result type need to match the corresponding uh, output tensor. And and um, the output tensor also have another uh, uh, have another uh, functionality that is to uh, do destructive updates. So uh, as we can see here, the um, uh, sometimes we need to carry the uh, result from one iteration to the next. So uh, in this case, we can use the output tensor to achieve this. So the add result uh, will be uh, stored back into the output sensor through the yield so that uh, it can be carried forward to uh, be seen in the next iteration. Mm, yeah, those are, uh, those are everything about the input and output operands. And uh, next is a uh, is a uh, probably the most uh, core part about uh, uh, Linux generic op is the uh, compute payload that defines uh, what uh, do you uh, what compute uh, com computation you want to do with all the tensors and that uh, um, that compute uh, payload is a uh, region. And it's in the innermost uh, innermost loop, and that uh, region uh, has a uh, uh, the top level basic block, and the each arguments of the top level basic block corresponds to one element in the uh, in each of the operands. So you can always uh, assume the uh, arguments of those blocks is already scalar type and already after we index things through uh, into the tensor and um and the lineage uh, yield uh, yield operation would uh, yield as it uh, name suggests would yield the result to the output tensor. So the yield operands uh, corresponds to um, corresponds to uh, each of the output operands. So if you need uh, more than one output operands, then the yield uh, operation would need to take uh, more than one element as well to write to uh, all of the output tensor. Um, and in the code, uh, uh, the 
code is actually also pretty straightforward. The arcs are just each of the uh, map, each of the operands, including the input and output operands and the yield operation. And yeah, that's it. So uh, hopefully uh, this can make, uh, when, when you write the, uh, the notch ops to implement operators, this can, uh, now you have a clear, uh, clear uh, concept about how to do it. Yeah, uh, so do, do you folks have any questions? Um, I, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so um, with the with this uh, fine map and uh, iterator uh, specification, how do you how would you, for example, um, like uh, in the iteration skip a dimension, let's say? Keep a dimension skip to skip skip some dimension in the iteration. Uh, uh, by skip in the second map, I think so. It is skipping, right? There are four dimensions, and in the output, yeah, it is so, so you, no, because, because uh, the way uh, kind of understood it, maybe I, I, I didn't get it right, but so, so the uh, so you specify the iterator types. Uh, here uh, there are four like parallel, parallel reduction reduction uh, like for example i mean you you might have uh for the let's say for the uh, in, uh four dimensional uh, input uh but uh, you want to iterate uh only only on subset let's say of these dimensions uh I don't think uh, you can skip dimension for a given operate uh, for a given skipping... operand. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can you can keep one dimension to be zero, so that it's always just reading from the zero. But uh -huh. yeah. Mm, but you still need to specify three affine uh, expressions. And if you want to uh, skip a dimension or elite, eliminate a dimension, you can use constant zero for that dimension. OK, and then probably it's, it's going to be optimized out the uh, uh, the shape would be uh, still, for example, you have a 3D uh, operand and you uh, eliminate one dimension, but it was, uh, the output would still have uh, the one dimension with size one. And if you want to change the shape, you need to like use a squeeze, a collapse or expand to adjust the shape to eliminate that dimension. Okay, so in this case, for example, we might uh, in the fine map uh, where we specify uh, after the arrow, for example, we instead of D zero, we can put just zero there. And this would, uh, this would basically index always zero on the- Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see examples of this too in the actual code if you look at the reduction ops in convert um, parts to Linux. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a good, very good suggestion. Uh, yeah, well, good way to learn about it to look at the examples. There are examples about broadcasting, uh, transpose, and yeah, and uh, cumulative. Uh, reduction loops. There are already a lot of existing examples in the code.